welcome, welcome to the mothers, the fathers, grandparents, teachers, Principal um, Brewster, and of course all of our guests. And most importantly, your graduating class of 2016. Should take that off the stand. I honestly cannot imagine how your parents feel tonight. I have two sons who are graduating from <coughs> kindergarten and nursery school next year, and I'm already so choked up about it. <laughs> I just wanted to clear one thing up. I heard there's a really nasty rumor going around that some people were really disappointed that the keynote speaker tonight wasn't a tall, dark, handsome, charismatic, six foot four, gray cup winning champion. <laughs> I want to make one thing clear. All good things come in small packages. <laughs> so, 2016. I really I keep looking out and looking at so many proud families and so many proud mamas. And I keep thinking to myself, the day that I graduated high school, all of these women must have looked exactly like I do today which is to say, nine months pregnant and about to pop. <laughs> I graduated from high school in 1998, which is the year most of you guys were born, okay? I don't know if you guys can even imagine 1998. Time for the history. Have you guys ever met someone who doesn't have a cell phone? That's creepy, aren't they, right? Imagine meeting someone who's never used Google. Imagine that Google did not exist. Did you know, for example, when I was in high school, I never did anything crazy, irresponsible, or out of control? <laughs> never. And you know what? That's a fact. And you know why it's a fact? Because there's literally no evidence to the contrary. <laughs> there is no Facebook post, no Instagram pictures, no snaps, no tweets. No timelines and no cloud. There are not even texts or voice messages. I actually feel really sorry for you guys. <laughs> no, all of my teachers thought I was an angel. And I know that nothing from 18 years ago is going to haunt me today. <laughs> 1990 was very sweet. It was the year, hit me baby one more time. The Spice Girls came out, tell me what you want. It was the year of your birth. It was the year Google was founded and the first iMac was invented. That was also the year that Bill Clinton did not have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> OJ was free, and Michael Jackson was alive. I spent innocent weekends watching Electric Circus on Much Music, and everybody wore white bands. The world has really changed so much since then. Back then, no one knew about climate change or globalization. Justin Bieber wasn't born. The internet was not a part of life, and social media was non-existent. Did you know you could not even buy anything online? That year, I started university listening to a Walkman, and I never did a duck face. A lifetime has passed since 1998, and specifically since my high school graduation, your entire lifetime has passed. The world today was unimaginable back then. And while I'm still very disappointed that we don't have self-lacing Nikes and hoverboards, I do have to acknowledge that there has been a complete revolution in life in every way. The way we think, the way we communicate is unrecognizable. And before you guys get any ideas about how old I am, I just want to say, I'm younger than Beyonce. <laughs> To imagine what will come is incredible. To imagine that you are the ones that will go on to create this new, ever-changing world is fascinating. And yet, you guys will find that with so much change happening, you never actually realize that time is passing. When I was asked to speak at grad today about my life experience, it seems so surreal to me, because it seems so normal, as if a day hasn't passed since I was 18 years old. So, for me, my life is very normal, because why would it? The youngest daughter of a Sudanese poet and an Aboriginal human rights lawyer end up in Manitowash as a rural family physician. Seems like the most normal thing in the world. <laughs> I 
have to confess that when I was in high school, I definitely lived without thinking of the future. I walked through doors as they opened, and I was very lucky to have a meddling mother who loved to orchestrate things in my life. In school, in high school, I fell madly in love with physics. And then I ended up being in the unlikely position of becoming one of only a handful of female grads to graduate from electrical engineering at the U of A. Then, due to a visa mix-up, I accidentally ended up hitchhiking through Vietnam all by myself for four months. I ventured into Cambodia and Laos, where not only was I held hostage at gunpoint twice, I also met incredible people working in demining the country and providing prosthetics for landmine victims across Southeast Asia. This really led me to an intense passion for biomedical engineering, and I was lucky enough to be awarded the NSERT grant, where I traveled to Texas just after the World Trade Center fell in order to study my master's research in medical physics. From there, I found myself in med school, which I promptly dropped out of after two years. <laughs> because back then, I could not imagine a life without math or coding. Because who could, right? Very boring. I then moved to Paris, where I submerged myself into the incredible world of engineering and anthropology research with the United Nations. I got to travel the world from Algeria to Argentina, from Singapore to the South Pacific Islands. I swam with Fidel Castro in Cuba. I survived the Boxy Day tsunami in Thailand. I worked in pediatric surgery in Morocco, and I fell deeply in love with humanity, which brought me back to medical school, which I did finish so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> My medical residency brought me to Toronto, where in 2008, I turned down Drake, that's right. I gave Avi Graham five fingers to the face. <laughs> and in 2009... <laughs> oh, in 2009, I came to manage Porsche for the first time. And that was the same year that I met Raymond. And almost three beautiful babies later, the rest is history. So, what I wanted to tell you is really all my life, I've been guided by one very simple, very, very true belief. This is something that was drilled into my head from the time I was a child, and I really hope it was for you as well. And that was the fundamental belief in the utter equality of all of humankind. We truly are all equal in our capacity, in our potential, and in our abilities. I was never, ever allowed to come home and tell my parents, that I wasn't good at something or that I couldn't do something. My parents made me believe that one person in the world can do something, every single person in the world can do that. So going forward, I never want you to forget the fact that you can literally do anything you want. There are no cans and no limitations. No limitations. I want you guys to take some time and truly envision what you want your future to be. Imagine that when this baby graduates in 2034, you might be speaking at his or her grad. <laughs> what is it that you're going to tell them, and what will have happened in your life? Take the future you want and simply do one thing, no matter how small, every day to help you achieve your goals. And remember, sometimes it's okay to let your parents meddle. Happy graduation. in this country is people losing the sense that they have a reason to vote. Our challenge uh, as Greens is to convince Canadians who are turned off. I'm low on gas and I don't want to take that, that chance, eh? Because if it does come in the middle of the night, then... Uh, because, I mean,